you open your Bibles today, I need to apologize. Uh, technology wasn't working for me this week, and so you're going to have to... We do have it up here. I don't have it in the Version Bible app, so those of you that are looking for it, you're thinking, my phone ain't working, you need an update. Uh, it was me. So, uh, so we got it here. We may have to do it old school, open your Bibles, that's fine too, though. But we're going to be in uh, the book of Philippians this morning, and the book of Revelation. Uh, this morning and maybe a few other places but uh, excited to get to preach again uh, 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 I, ch- I challenge y'all uh, I guess back in August when I preached uh, you know every time I preach something happens and uh, last time I think Lila had to go to the emergency room the time before that I had an allergic reaction to a hay, hay meadow yesterday my car decided not to stop at the stoplight in front of Walmart, so I T-boned a guy. Uh, so no more Bronco Billy that I drive around. So uh, if y'all see me walking on the street, give me a ride to church. Uh, but thank God that uh, uh, everybody was all right, just a little sore. So if I sound like Sam Elliott, it's because I took a, a steering wheel to the throat. Feels like Chuck Norris roundhouse me right, right in the throat. But... Uh, but we've got it. I think God's got a great word today. Uh, not really sure how we're going to get into it, but I just know, uh, man, I've been on such a journey this past summer. Uh, uh, I think I mentioned that last time, just uh, probably been the most challenging summer of my life, uh, but probably one of the best. God's really got me in a place of understanding Him more, and it's a great place to be if you've ever been in a different place than that, which I have, just uh, trying to as we, Angela talked about last weekend, the youth, I was just surviving. I was just waking up. I was going to work. I was doing good things. It wasn't bad things, but I wasn't really doing them with a purpose. And, you know, that's what God wants us to do. He has purpose for us as the church. And I'm not talking about First Baptist Church. I know that we have some purpose, but I'm talking about just His church, His bridegroom. And, so uh, uh, I was coming across this, and it just was really convicting to me. And, and I do a lot of podcasts. I do a lot of audio books and uh, reading a great book right now that is uh, I'm really excited about what God's doing using that, that book and really his scripture to, to minister to me as an individual, as a pastor, one of the pastors at a church, and uh, just just really excited, and, and I was, uh, it's caused me to look at the Bible a whole different way. Every time I, I kind of come across the revelation, I do that. But if you'll turn with me in Philippians chapter 3, starting in verse 1, it says, Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is, safe, it is a safeguard for you. It says, watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh. For if we, if we who are the circumcision, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus. That is, should be our glory, Christ Jesus. Uh, that just, just jumps off the page at me. Uh, who glory in Christ Jesus and who put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. And so this is Paul writing to that church at at Philippians, and it wasn't too long ago Josh preached about Lydia. You know, she helped start that church in Philippi, and, and he has just a love for this these group of people because uh, God allowed to, to work through him to minister to them. So he has a deep love, and so he's just trying to encourage them, as, as I'm trying to do today. But I was reading this, and, and Paul says here in verse 4, Though I have uh, reasons for such confidence in the flesh... And so I just said, okay, what are some things that I have confidence in? Just my ability, you know? And some of those things are, are, are not necessarily fleshly things unless how we use them, right? Uh, my ability to, uh, one of the things that I can do, I can walk in a room and whether it's a group of four-year-olds uh, here at the Wee Center, I can have a conversation with them or I can pull up a chair with Miss Shirley Taggart or Miss Arlene and we can have a good conversation and, and that's a great thing. That's one of the things I believe God's gifted me with. Uh, but sometimes I can use that uh, for fleshly things too. And so I was just thinking like Paul, confidence in the flesh. And Paul goes on to say, if anyone thinks he has reason to put confidence in the flesh, 
He says, I have more. He says, if you want to get a one-up, you want to get in a one-up battle with me, uh, you'll lose because I, 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 I am it. Let me tell you why. He says, um, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for uh, 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 righteousness, faultless. You know, he is uh, he's saying, I got all these things. What people say about me, my reputation, I got it. I got the reputation. But here in verse 7, this is, the, these next few verses is really where I've been on these past few days. It says, but whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of the Christ. What is more... Watch this. I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them rubbish, trash, garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God, and it is by faith. And I want to know Christ, in the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of sharing in his suffering, become like him in his death, and so somehow to obtain to the resurrection from the dead. And so Paul just says here, and this is kind of where I'm going today, Paul just says, man, I consider these fleshly things that people say good things about them, and it wasn't necessarily that they were bad, some of them were, but he ends up going to say, I consider everything a loss. Because of knowing Jesus Christ. It's just that con- contrast that he has, right? You know, sometimes we put Christ here, but then there's a close second. So that's my question for you today. Is what are you in love with? I mean, really. If we're here in church, and I could ask you, I, I bet I could go around. I've been at, we just got at the youth retreat. And I love kids because uh, young people, they're just so conditioned to say what you think they want to hear. And I say kids, but aren't we the same way as adults? You get in the right situation. Now, we might have a group of people that we can really maybe be a little more transparent with. But what are you in love with today? You know, uh, let me ask it a different way. What's the biggest lie you're carrying around right now? Like nobody knows about you. That you might, some of you, you know, uh, uh, just uh, through worship today, I was praying. I knew God was probably going to take me in this direction. And because uh, I've been there, I, uh, uh, most of you knew me. I grew up in this church, you know. Uh, I tell the youth, I try to be as transparent as I can with them. Growing up, I, I uh, was pretty active in the youth group. Uh, athletically, I was captain of the basketball team, uh, played baseball, and I wore these two different hats. And it wasn't necessarily a lie that I, I just had two different lives. And some of us in here, you know, as much as we say that we don't, we do. We have, we have two different lives. And I really do believe my prayer this week is when God got me there. I think some of you in here have been carrying around this lie for decades. And just me saying it right now and the Holy Spirit working, whew, it's, it's a lot right now. But I want you to know that God... God knows. In fact, if you flip over with me to Revelation chapter 3, I've really, uh, this book that I've been reading was actually stemmed from that, that devotional that God, Josh challenged us on, uh, that we are the church. It, it's written by Francis Chan, but it's called Letters to the Church. And so I've been, I've been reading that book and reading this, and God brought me to this church in Sardis there and started chapter 3. And I just love how he writes, starts all these. He says, To the angel of the church in Sardis, write, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits. That's a kind of a new description that I love of God. I mean, think about that. Now, that's a God that, that, that powerful, holds the seven spirits. I've been kind of, okay, what is that? I've been kind of diving in that. But obviously, it's a God that, that, that can do more than just create the heavens and the earth. But to him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, he says, I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up. Strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, 
what you have received and heard. Obey it and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and, one, and you will not know what time I will come. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not sold their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white for they are worthy. He who overcomes will, like them, be dressed in white and I will never blot out his name from the book of life but will acknowledge his name before my Father and his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. So just find yourself right there sometimes. I don't know if you ever find there. And, and, and listen, it may not be just terrible things. You know, one of the things that I've noticed over this summer is the things that we tell ourselves, you know, it's good. You know, we we tell ourselves, oh, it's okay not to come to church on Sunday. You just need to rest and, and do all that. And, and I'm not going to be legalistic and say you got to be every day. But you know whenever that's really, you just kind of say that, but it's really not where you're at. Uh, but I know over the summer, you know, I was very blessed to be able to go to a few different places, kind of go on vacation, and, and I just kind of edged out and did some great things, spent some intentional time with my wife, spent some intentional time with my kids, and it just gets real easy sometimes, right? The good things, right? Those things are not bad. Vacations are a great time, but, but I find myself getting really frustrated <laughs> at how quickly this this surpassing knowledge of knowing Christ Jesus it just kind of and I'm like God I'm, I'm better than this why does this these little things just just creep in my life so it doesn't necessarily have to be deep sin but 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 I really do believe God gave me this message for some and you've done such a great job at this reputation before men I did it I was good I could do it right it's just so easy for us to do because we're flesh sometimes Right? It's easy for us to just lie to other people, right? <laughs> you know, when, when I grew up in uh, 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 this little town in Louisiana, uh, see, I just did. I didn't grow up in Louisiana. It's just, it can be really easy for us to lie. But I want you to know, um, you know, what if, what if I was able to take a list and I went to your work or went to your close friends and just said, Tell me about fill in your name. Tell me about him. What do you, what do you know about him? And write some of these things down. And, da, 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 da. and then maybe I went home, right? Because sometimes we have this work relationships that's really good and our, our families kind of get the worst of this. And so you, then I ask your wife, I ask your kids, you know, tell me about your dad. What, what's he like? Tell me about your mom. Tell me, you know. And that's all fine and good because... You know, I, I'm reminded of, I think it's Psalm 139. I read it this week, but when, when, when he's saying, you know, search me. Ask God to search you. You know, what if I was able to go into the throne room of God and say, hey, God, tell me about so-and-so. What, what would, the, would the list be similar? I'm not asking you to be perfect, but I, I call it that pursuit. We've been talking about it the last four or five weeks, just this pursuit of really knowing Christ. But I find myself there, you know. And I'll, I'll challenge you that if, if, if people say different things than what God would say about you, that you're probably more worried about your reputation than your character. And, you know, God is coming back for His church, His bridegroom. And He wants us to be that fragrant offering for him. Collectively, individually, you know, I can't make you do it. I can be a messenger for God. I can do that. But ultimately, you are responsible for you. I wish I could. I, there were people I've, I've, I've ministered to at times, and I wish I could make them understand. And I can't until you have that revelation, until you have that desire. But I have been that guy. I have been that guy that had secrets way down in my heart that I didn't want anybody to know. I didn't want my wife to know. I didn't want my parents to know. Uh, God knew them, but we didn't talk about it a lot because I was ashamed. Until he got me to the point, you know, it was, it was crazy. I, and I know some of you find yourself there because it's almost like, a, 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 I've joked about it with people before, you know, you get an email and it's just the world we live in. You get a text message, hey, can we talk? And where does your mind immediately go? 
At least mine, it's negative. Oh gosh, what's, what's going on? And God's been correcting me on that. Why do you always assume it's bad? Especially when I'm in a great place. I still assume that it's bad. But there's times that we assume that it's bad because, oh gosh, somebody's figured it out. Somebody saw me. And God wants to, 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 to help you out today. We sang some great songs today. And one of the things we talked about this past weekend was sin with these young people. In fact, I joked, uh, uh, I was texting Brandon and Crystal Sims, Penelope went with us, and I said, hey, thanks for letting Penelope go with us. We really enjoyed her. And he's like, hey, man, she, she, she dropped this question that you told the kids to ask. And, and then he followed it up with the question, and it was, what's the, what's the biggest sin you've ever committed in your life? And so I was eating dinner with Kimberly, and I started laughing, not, not at that, but that wasn't the question that I'd ask them to go home. And I was like, good for Penelope. I, I said, wow, that's a great talking point you should have with your daughter. Here's the question. And the question was, at your age, because it was, it was crazy to me, we had sixth graders all the way through 12th graders, and I asked every grade, what's, not you necessarily, because, you know, we don't like to talk about us, but we can talk about us as a whole, you know, people. But I said, sixth graders, what's the biggest sin? You know, what's the biggest problem with your, 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 your uh, classmates? And they said, uh, I don't know, attitudes. And some of you parents that may have sixth graders, you could probably amen that. But they were like, attitudes. I said, okay, seventh graders, where are we at? And one of them said, sex. And... One kid was like that. And I, I, and, but I didn't want them to be ignorant because life happens really fast from 6th through 12th grade. And then I got my seniors involved and we, had, we went through every grade of what it is and they go, what's the biggest sin? All of that. So it's not like Satan says, okay, the 6th grade year I want to have, challenge them with bad attitudes and then I'm going to plug this in. He just builds upon that because he doesn't know how to be original, Right? He copies God every time he does something. So as God was laying down some foundations to build on, Satan said, oh, that's good, I'm going to use that too. And he does that too. He, he'll try to lay down foundations uh, of sin and build upon those. And, and that's honestly where a lot of our sin comes from. And I'm reminded by James, the, uh, uh, he, I reminded the kids that you know, our sin comes from deep within us. But let me just ask yourself, what? If God was to search your heart, your soul, your mind, what would he say about you today? What's he telling you to, he wants you to, to, to get rid of today? And, and we're going to get there, but, but you know, uh, Lucy did this demonstration. It's been powerful. I've been trying. So I hope I don't screw it up. She had saw it, but it, it's just a great visual representation. And so uh, you got chocolate milk, which, which I love. I really love Coke, but I do like chocolate milk. You got this lemonade, who both by themselves are, are good, right? And so I think some of us, this is, this, is, this is our God fountain, right? The living water. This is, we come here on Sunday morning, we, we do this thing, and this kind of represents our flesh. And I really do believe some of you really love Jesus. You know, you, you just love him, and you want to you wanna drink from him, and so you take a little swig on Sunday mornings maybe. Maybe that's the only time you get a little, little drink from God. But it, that's what you know. Maybe that's how you were raised, right? We, we went back to the generational thing at, at youth, you know. Sometimes you can't help but how you're raised. But, it, but that's, not a, that's not an excuse. It's a reason for where you're at. You've got to change that reason. And so you come to church on Sunday and that's all you get of Jesus, but you take a big drink. It's good. Then on Monday, you know, you go to work and uh, you hadn't seen your buddies over the weekend. They say, hey man, look at this. And they show you something maybe on their phone or they just tell you a nasty joke and then you're like, it triggered something in your mind. Hey, I heard this good and you just, you know, those pleasures of the flesh. And let me tell you, they both, they're called pleasures of the flesh because there is something there, right? And so you, you take a little drink from this. Not too bad. And you come back here and you're like, man, God, I love you. I love that. I love, you know, as a church, we're called to love one another. Man, I love you guys. I love you. You take that drink. 
Somebody cut you off in the parking lot out there, and you're like, bloop. Right? Oh, God, I love you. I love worshiping you, these songs today. I, I joked about it. Angela has such a beautiful voice that God's gifted her. If y'all could have heard me singing that uh, in the car, it didn't sound near that good. But I was singing it out. It's an awesome, awesome album that ministered to me. Uh, but you just love worshiping God, and you just tell Him how great He is. And, and I think you truly mean it. I really do. So you take another swig. Then you go home at night and nobody's there and so you strike on the computer and you find yourself in this rabbit hole of pornography and, and you really don't want to be there, but you're there and so you're drinking this milk. And we continue to do a life of that back and forth and that is not how God intended it to be. And so then all of a sudden you're like, you know, I'm just kind of tired, so this is what I want to bring, right? Right? I'm going to have 90% Jesus and this other 10% and he's just going to have to deal with it. And that's not what he wants us to look like, guys. He gives us his words to change our lives. And so then we're just walking around and you're not even getting the lemonade side of things. It doesn't even taste very good. And then, you know, back and forth, you know, maybe I'm going to put, maybe I'm, maybe I'm 90% sin and try to be 10% God and now the, just that much will spoil chocolate milk. And that's because we have the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you've noticed this. I try to tell people this. When you're uh, uh, ser serving God, right? You, you, things, when you come to know Christ, things that used to bother you, then they start, didn't used to bother you, start bothering you because you have the Holy Spirit living within you. And then uh, these pleasures aren't really good because you got the Holy Spirit convicting you. And then you're over here when you're not right. He's still working on you, and, and you just can't find any satisfaction until you get to the bottom of it. And, and you, you know, it's, 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 I'm reminded of David, and these aren't on the deal, but uh, what you're probably going to go there, but David talks about in Psalm 31, uh, or Psalm 32. It says, Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin is the Lord does not count against him, and whose spirit is no deceit. Watch what he says here. He says, When I kept silent, my bones wasted away, though my groanings all day long, through my groanings all day long, for the day and night your hand was heavy upon me, and my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and did not cover up my iniquity, I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave me in the guilt of my sin. So you just see that struggle sometimes. I, I don't know, I can only tell you about me, but I found myself in that place that I just didn't know where to go. I, I can tell you, I, I didn't know where to go. And so, I called my mom one day. And it wasn't a normal conversation a son has with her mom. And she, she, she pointed me and I ended up calling Miss Olivia. And she's like, you go in that closet and you don't come out. And I did. I stayed in that closet for a long time. A long time. It was dark. Because, you know, the old adage, sin will take you uh, farther than you want to go, make you stay longer than you want to stay, and make you pay way more than you want to pay and I could see I could see the path that I was on and I didn't know how to get out of there and then I was reminded this and this is this is going to be this is where God has really been challenging me is do we believe his word or not because you know first John 1 9 you probably could say it if we confess our sins he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and pur purify us from all unrighteousness. That's easy enough, right? I can talk, I've talked to God about it before. You know, I was thinking about this in, in dealing with sin, whatever that is. You know, maybe some of you, I don't know, I, I've really been asking God to kind of give me some words of knowledge that I can really call whatever that is to life, you know. So maybe some of you, uh, have been battling depression and so to offset that depression you you pop pills and you've done it for a long long time to masquerade that God wants to set you free of that today 
Maybe some of you guys, you just uh, uh, just needing a relief. And, and let me tell you, it's not guys either. I, I, it's a scary statistic that there's just as many women that look at pornography as there is men. And it's this nasty, dirty little secret that if somebody, you know, uh, ever found out, was able to really check your, your history on your computer, you've been doing it for a long time, and you really don't want to do it, it's, it's, I'm reminded, I call it the Dr. Seuss verse in, in Romans that Paul talks about, I do the things that I don't want to do, and I don't do the things that I want to do kind of deal. And you don't want to do it, but you find yourself there, and it's maybe not every, every night. It, it may be once a week. It may be once in a blue moon. It may be when you find yourself all alone and bored and the enemy starts working. He wants to set you free of that today. Because, you see, we're called to be the church. And, you know, I was reminded, uh, you know, one of the things that I could drink from all the time is, is, you know, God, I'm in a great place with you. Right? Take that drink of that lemonade in the same hand. God, I'm in a great place with you. I'm not going to go deal with her because I'm in a great place with you when he's calling us to do. You know, James reminds us that if any of you know that you should be doing this, something that is this, something is right, and you don't do it, it's a sin. I can't tell you how many people have had offense in their heart and they know, I know the Bible says I need to go to them and they don't. They just, they just throw scripture out like, hey, I know it, I've, it's puffed out my chest but it hadn't given me my brain enough to tell my feet to go and do it. And you've allowed that seed of sin to, to come in there and, and, and bring bitterness in. You ever been around somebody that's bitter? Yeah. Ugh. But for some of you, you've been carrying it around a long time. For some of you, you just started dabbling in it. And God says, hey, because I was reminded in Romans, you know, we are the church. We are his bridegroom. So if I'm good, I'm in a good place, right? That's great. But he reminds us in Romans chapter 12 to offer our bodies, plural, your body and my body as the church, as one living sacrifice. So mine may be pure lemonade, but my brother next to me, who I don't want to go walk through their trials and tribulations and get there, he may be, he may be 90% sin. And I don't want to deal with it. But we, it's not, I get to offer my body, one body to him, right? It says our bodies, offer our bodies. So we've got to get it together, church. We do. You know, when we're reminded in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful, just and will forgive us our sins if we confess them if we confess them you ever had somebody confess something to you did they just think it and you knew what they were talking about no they used their words and they confessed them and I'm not getting legalistic that you gotta uh, I'm reminded y'all I don't even know why this popped in my head but I'm reminded of the movie Goonies y'all remember the movie Goonies how many seen the movie Goonies and old chunks up on there, and they're they're saying, "I want to know it all." And and he goes back from the time he was born in the first grade, and he's you know, and they were like, "Oh gosh, you know." But you know, it's not necessarily that, but maybe it is. As I tell people all the time, as you start to know Christ, the easy stuff comes out, right? I asked the youth the other day. We we've been in First John on Wednesday nights. So we've been trying to read the Bible in, in its entirety. So we've been in First John, and we were talking about you know, if you confess your sins, so. I asked one of them, I said, how often do you confess? You know, because we're really good as pastors and leaders. Hey, you need to pray to God and ask Him to forgive you. And we don't remind them that it's a constant, it's a state of repentance. Because we continue to sin. And so we have to continue to ask God to forgive us. And so they were like, well, uh, I, I, I do uh, one of them. The fi- I, once a month, I confess them once a month. I was like, so you just got it written down like on the 15th of the month. You just confess your sins. And, and I knew, he just didn't, it was hard for them to get there. And then one of them w- was very honest. He goes, you know what? Th- those big sins, which I had fun, right? We have big sins as man. We say, oh, that's a, that's a bad sin, right? Sin is sin in God's eyes. So you may be carrying around an addiction that nobody knows about and somebody else told a little white lie today. God says it's sin. And sin separates us from him. But he was like, you know, the big stuff, I'm pretty good about asking God to forgive me, right? He said, it's the little stuff. And a lot of times we're not quiet before the Lord long enough for him to to really start working, cleaning us up from the inside out. We'll get these big things out and then we, we fill it with 
chocolate milk because we feel good. And then we get that stuff out. Instead of filling it with lemonade, we continue and we do the same thing because we're creatures of habit. But we're, we should be in a state of repentance with God. But James also tells us, and this is, this is really where I've been at these last few weeks, of really, if we believe the Bible was 100% true, and I think if I went around, everybody would say this. I do. I believe it's 100% true. And I do. I do believe it's 100% true. And James tells us in verse uh, 16 of James chapter 5, it says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you might be healed. Whoa. That's a tough one, right? It's okay, I'm just going to bow my head here in a few minutes. I'm going to do business with God, and, and I think God can work that way, but, but I think God can work this way too, and we forgot it, you know? God's just really been challenging me about the definition of the church in a great way. <laughs> When's the last time you really did this? I mean, we can't, some of us can't even confess our sins to our spouse, who is really you, because Genesis tells us that for this reason a man shall leave his mother and father and cling to his wife, and they shall become one. So really, if you can't tell your wife, you're really lying to yourself, and some of us have been doing it a long time. There's just that stuff in here, and God, I can see it. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. There's this, this pressure point that is coming. This, it's, the water's starting to boil, and God is getting ready for a harvest. And that's why these messages that God has put on Josh's heart and my heart. But the church has got to be re- ready to help him in the harvest. And we can't do it with yuck in our lives, guys. We can continue to come here day after day, Sunday after Sunday, and sing a few songs, kind of be spurred on, drink a few sips of lemonade, but you still want to have your chocolate milk. And it's just that pursuit. The Bible says we shouldn't even desire chocolate milk anymore. But I'm not going to tell you that I hadn't. In fact, that's the other thing I was thinking about is, is, you know, we are weak as humans, as Christians. We just want God to take us away out of everything, out of all the suffering. And, and, and Paul wrote there in Philippians chapter 3, he wants to know Christ even through the sufferings. Like, we shouldn't just have this, oh, just give me a good day today. Da, 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 da. God, take this temptation away from me. Da, da. And, and there's nothing wrong with praying that. But, but what I want you to understand, sometimes he's gonna, he wants to give you the strength to overcome that temptation. And I know for me, when he did that for me, it was revelation. I can do this. And if he keep taking you out of those situations, you never learn to have the endurance that leads to perseverance to overcome those situations. And he wants you to. And, you know, I could probably go through the room and start, just like I did with the sixth graders, I could start with some, some, some four-year-olds, and they would tell me what the biggest challenge is. And that foundation has been laid. And, and, you know, some of those challenges that they face are given to them from their parents. And then we get a little older, and we go, I could go all the way through this room and, 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 and get to those things that we have tucked away in here. So that's my question today. The Bible says you can't serve two masters. And for some of you, y'all have been serving that, whatever that lie, whatever that sin, whatever that is in your life. And I'm talking about some of you probably in this room, if people really knew, their jaw would drop to the floor. But God knows. That's what I want you to understand. Just like that church at Sardis, they had a reputation, right? He said, hey, before men, you got them whooped. But I see you for who you are, and you're dead. Don't be that person, guys. And I know some of you, your heart's probably beating 90 miles an hour, but you have to make that decision that you want to know God, that you want to pursue God, and you want to push that away. You want to get rid of it. And so we're going to do something here. Stephanie, if you'll come play. We're going to do something. I wasn't sure if I was going to do it, but, but I am. And nobody knows but me and God. We talked about it all week. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna give a time of invitation. I'm going to be down front. How many deacons do I have in here? If you're a deacon, raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Okay, good. How about some, some, those are men, most of them are men. So how about some ladies that wouldn't mind standing on the side of the walls and praying with some people?
Thank you, Miss Robin. Miss Lynette, somebody over here? Alyssa, anybody else? Tracy, good. So we're just going to enter a time of invitation. And I'm inviting you to deal with that sin. I'm inviting you. And let me tell you, I know the hardest thing. I know I've been there is, is what people think of you. And I'm amazed at how many people think the church is the most judgmental place. And you know why they think that? Because there's been a time that the church was the most judgmental place. But not today. Because you see, I think God is ready to get his bridegroom in shape. He's ready to get ready for the wedding, you know. I've never been uh, 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 a bride, but I know they're like, okay, I gotta, I gotta start working out. I gotta get fit. I gotta get in this dress. I gotta, you know, and that's what he's doing with the church. He is, he is getting her ready for the wedding because Jesus is coming back, and he wants you to be a part of it. But he wants you to deal with that sin. He doesn't, he didn't mean for you to carry that around everywhere you go, like a burden. Like a, I mean, it, it, it causes your, your thought process. Everything funnels through it. Oh, I gotta, I gotta protect this sin. Aren't you tired of carrying it around today? This wasn't the message that I wanted to go. This is where God brought me. I would have much rather preached on how great God is and and talked about, you know, just encouraging you. And this is this is a message of encouraging because uh, my friend Turner and I've been talking about, you know, Jesus was a full measure of grace and truth. And I used to think those things were like a, like a balance, right? Grace and truth. But I think it was, it's here. Aren't you being graceful to somebody when you give them that truth? And not just letting them wallow around. And so I know for some of you, the Bible also says, don't cast your pearls before swine. Not saying your sin is a pearl, but it's your own. And, it, and it's, very, it's been in there so long that it's almost a part of you. So you don't just want to come take the microphone and share it. God wants to do that today. Whatever it is. Because it can be great things. You know, I was thinking about God, where are you taking this church and this ministry? And I was thinking and game planning and talking to Josh and we were praying and doing stuff. And I find myself with great intentions of building his kingdom that I snuff out God sometimes. It's just that surpassing knowledge of knowing him. You know? And marriage is a great thing. I, t- I tell people all the time, you know, I know Kimberly well enough there's sometimes that I can say what's coming out of her mouth before she even does and she looks at me. How did you, how did you know I was going to say that? Because I, I know you. And that's that knowing Jesus. It's knowing that way. Knowing what his heart is. Knowing what's breaking his heart. And he's been knocking on that door and that Holy Spirit's been whispering in your ear for years and you just, you, you just tuned him out. But he wants to do business with you today please please don't leave here and I know for some of you this this is this the way that we know this invitation time and so when I pray after I pray those deacons are going to stand around the outside of the walls those ladies are going to stand if you need prayer if you need to confess your sins as James reminded us so you can be healed all those people that raised their hand I know them well enough to know that they're great people that you can you can confide in them don't you want to be healed today? Don't you believe that God can do that? But you've got to decide that that's what you want. Jesus is calling. So we're fixing to sing this song here. It's called I Surrender All. And I picked that song for a reason because you know, sometimes we talk about all the good things, but surrender that, that yuck while we, while we sing. And so we're going to sing. We're going to pray. I'll be down front. Please don't leave here with any, any stone left uncovered.